2 Corinthians 7 Since we have these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit, bringing holiness to completion in the fear of God. Make room in your hearts for us. We have wronged no one. We have corrupted no one. We have taken advantage of no one. I do not say this to condemn you, for I said before that you are in our hearts to die together and to live together. I am acting with great boldness toward you. I have great pride in you. I am filled with comfort. In all our affliction I am overflowing with joy. For even when we came into Macedonia, our bodies had no rest, but we were afflicted at every turn, fighting without and fear within. But God, who comforts the downcast, comforted us by the coming of Titus, and not only by his coming, but also by the comfort with which he was comforted by you, as he told us of your longing, your mourning, your zeal for me, so that I rejoiced still more. For even if I made you grieve with my letter, I do not regret it, though I did regret it, for I see that that letter grieved you, though only for a while. As it is, I rejoice, not because you were grieved, but because you were grieved into repenting. For you felt a godly grief, so that you suffered no loss through us. For godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret, whereas worldly grief produces death. For see what earnestness this godly grief has produced in you, but also what eagerness to clear yourselves, what indignation, what fear, what longing, what zeal, what punishment. At every point you have proved yourselves innocent in the matter. So although I wrote to you, it was not for the sake of the one who did the wrong, nor for the sake of the one who suffered the wrong, but in order that your earnestness for us might be revealed to you in the sight of God. Therefore we are comforted. And besides our own comfort, we rejoice still more at the joy of Titus, because his spirit has been refreshed by you all. For whatever boasts I made to him about you, I was not put to shame. But just as everything we said to you was true, so also our boasting before Titus has proved true. And his affection for you is even greater, as he remembers the obedience of you all, how you received him with fear and trembling. I rejoice, because I have perfect confidence in you. to see and to hear this morning. I'm blessed because you are a forgiving God and an understanding God, for you have done so much for me, and you keep on blessing. Forgive me this day when I've sinned. I ask now for your forgiveness. Keep me safe from all danger and harm. Let me start this day with a new attitude and plenty of gratitude. Let me make the best of each and every day and give my best in all that is put before me. Clear my mind that I can hear from you. Broaden my mind that I can accept all things. Let me not whine or whimper over things that I have no control over. Let me continue to see sin through your eyes and acknowledge it as evil. And when I sin, let me repent confess my wrongdoing and receive the forgiveness. And when this world closes in on me, let me remember Yeshua Jesus' example to slip away and find a quiet place to pray. It's the best response when I'm pushed beyond my limits. I know that when I can't pray, you listen to my heart. Continue to use me to do your will. Continue to bless me that I may be a blessing to others for your sake. Keep me strong that I may help the weak. Keep me uplifted that I may have words of encouragement for others that are in need. 
I pray for those that are lost and can't find their way. I pray for those that are misjudged and misunderstood. I pray for those who refuse to share a word from you. I pray for Yerushalayim and for Eretz Yisrael. And I pray for those that will read this and hear this and not use this and misunderstand. I pray for those that will not listen and not share. I pray for those who don't believe, but I believe. I believe that the Creator changes things and our Creator God changes people. I pray for all my sisters and brothers. This is my prayer. I pray in Yeshua Jesus, the Mashiach, the Messiah, Bashem Yeshua. Amen. Have a blessed day. Work for the Lord. The retirement benefits are out of this world. If you like this and it's blessed you, pass it on. Second Corinthians 8. We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means, of their own accord, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. And this not as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord, and then by the will of God to us. Accordingly, we urged Titus that as he had started, so he should complete among you this act of grace. But as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all earnestness, and in our love for you, See that you excel in this act of grace also. I say this not as a command, but to prove by the earnestness of others that your love also is genuine. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. And in this matter I give my judgment. This benefits you, who a year ago started not only to do this work, but also to desire to do it. So now, finish doing it as well, so that your readiness in desiring it may be matched by your completing it out of what you have. For if the readiness is there, it is acceptable according to what a person has, not according to what he does not have. For I do not mean that others should be eased and you burdened, but that as a matter of fairness, your abundance at the present time should supply their need, so that their abundance may supply your need, that there may be fairness. As it is written, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. But thanks be to God who put into the heart of Titus the same earnest care I have for you. For he not only accepted our appeal, but being himself very earnest, he is going to you of his own accord. With him we are sending the brother who is famous among all the churches for his preaching of the gospel. And not only that, but he has been appointed by the churches to travel with us as we carry out this act of grace that is being ministered by us, for the glory of the Lord himself, and to show our good will. We take this course so that no one should blame us about this generous gift that is being administered by us. For we aim at what is honorable, not only in the Lord's sight, but also in the sight of man. And with them we are sending our brother whom we have often tested and found earnest in many matters, but who is now more earnest than ever because of his great confidence in you. As for Titus, he is my partner and fellow worker for your benefit. And as for our brothers, they are messengers of the churches, the glory of Christ. So give proof before the churches of your love and of our boasting about you to these men. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers 
delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff, and the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Why do the nation conspire, and the people's plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand, and the rulers gather together against the Lord, and against the anointed one. Let us break their chains, they say, and throw off their fetters. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them, then rebukes them in his anger, and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I've installed my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask of me, and I will make nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You will rule them with an iron scepter. You will dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, kiss the son, lest he be angry with you and be destroyed in your ways. For his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. Makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of what is right for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For You are with me. Your rod and Your staff they comfort me. Prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil; my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The earth is the Lord's, and everything in it. The world and all who live in it, for He founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in His holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to the idol or swear by what is false. Receive blessings from the Lord and vindication from God His Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek Him, who seek Your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O you gates; be lifted up, you ancient doors. That the King of Glory may come in. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord strong and mighty. 
the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O oh, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. At that time, the disciples came to Yeshua and asked him, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child and had him stand among them. And he said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, Whoever humbles himself like this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me. But if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a large millstone hung around his neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe to the people because of things that cause people to sin. Such things must come, but woe to the man through whom they come. Woe to the world because of the things that cause people to sin. Such things must come, but woe to the man through whom they come. If your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. It is far better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into the fire of hell. See that you do not look down on one of these little ones. For I tell you that angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go back to look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, I tell you the truth, he is happier about the one sheep than about the 99 that did not wander off. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should be lost. Second Corinthians 9 Now, it is superfluous for me to write to you about the ministry for the saints, for I know your readiness, of which I boast about you to the people of Macedonia, saying that Achaia has been ready since last year, and your zeal has stirred up most of them. But I am sending the brothers so that our boasting about you may not prove empty in this matter, so that you may be ready, as I said you would be. Otherwise, if some Macedonians come with me and find that you are not ready, we would be humiliated, to say nothing of you, for being so confident. So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to go on ahead to you and arrange in advance for the gift you have promised, so that it may be ready as a willing gift, not as an exaction. The point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, 
so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. As it is written, He has distributed freely. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. For the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, but is also overflowing in many thanksgivings to God. By their approval of this service, they will glorify God because of your submission, flowing from your confession of the gospel of Christ, and the generosity of your contribution for them and for all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God upon you. Thanks be to God for His inexpressible gift. This is a song by Credence Clearwater Revival, Proud Mary, but now it's called Proud Spirit. It's the lust of the flesh, it's the lust of the eyes, it's the pride of life makes me call on Messiah. What well, make you call on Messiah? I left an old job in the city, working on my faith every night and day, cause I never found a minute of peace. Wearing about the way things might have been Big, big wheel, you need turning Cause a proud spirit will be burning Calling, calling Calling you to the river of life Calling, calling He's calling you to the river of life If you know now you're a sinner The body, soul, and spirit tempts us every day Do you know the way? Do you know the truth? Do you know the life? Do you know the door and the bread and the light? A big wheel you need turning A proud spirit will be burning Calling, calling Calling you to the river of life it's the lust of the flesh, it's the lust of the eyes, it's the pride of life makes me call on Messiah. They that call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. From yourself, from a sick and dying world, from the devil, and a black hole called hell. 2 Corinthians 10 I, Paul, myself, entreat you, by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, I who am humble when face to face with you, but bold toward you when I am away. I beg of you that when I am present, I may not have to show boldness with such confidence as I count on showing against some who suspect us of walking according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God, and take every thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. Look at what is before your eyes. If anyone is confident that he is Christ's, let him remind himself that just as he is Christ's, so also are we. For even if I boast a little too much of our authority, which the Lord gave for building you up and not for destroying you, I will not be ashamed. I do not want to appear to be frightening you with my letters, for they say, His letters are weighty and strong, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech of no account. Let such a person understand that what we say by letter when absent, we do when present. Not that we dare to classify or compare ourselves with some of those who are commending themselves, but when they measure themselves by one another and compare themselves with one another, they are without understanding. But we will not boast beyond limits, but will boast only with regard to the area of influence God assigned to us to reach even to you. 
for we are not overextending ourselves as though we did not reach you, for we were the first to come all the way to you with the gospel of Christ. We do not boast beyond limit in the labors of others, but our hope is that as your faith increases, our area of influence among you may be greatly enlarged, so that we may preach the gospel in lands beyond you, without boasting of work already done in another's area of influence. Let the one who boasts boast in the Lord, for it is not the one who commends himself who is approved, but the one whom the Lord commends. Seeing that you have purified your souls in obeying the truth to the spirit of for the unpretended love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not a corruptible seed, but the incorruptible by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. For all flesh is as grass, and the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower fades away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Break my heart and change my mind. Cut me loose from ties that bind Lead me as I follow you Give me strength to follow through Oh, more More I want to be more like the true love Less of me By his power I will be Like a flower In the spring Brand new life In everything Fill me up Gently overflow my cup Touch my eyes and let me see Second Corinthians 11 I wish you would bear with me in a little foolishness. Do bear with me. For I feel a divine jealousy for you, since I betrothed you to one husband, to present you as a pure virgin to Christ. But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus than the one we proclaimed, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, or if you accept a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it readily enough. Indeed, I consider that I am not in the least inferior to these super-apostles. Even if I am unskilled in speaking, I am not so in knowledge. Indeed, in every way we have made this plain to you in all things. Or did I commit a sin in humbling myself so that you might be exalted because I preached God's gospel to you free of charge? I robbed other churches by accepting support from them in order to serve you. And when I was with you and was in need, I did not burden anyone. 
for the brothers who came from Macedonia supplied my need. So I refrained and will refrain from burdening you in any way. As the truth of Christ is in me, this boasting of mine will not be silenced in the regions of Achaia. And why? Because I do not love you? God knows I do. And what I do, I will continue to do, in order to undermine the claim of those who would like to claim that in their boasted mission, they work on the same terms as we do. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. I repeat, let no one think me foolish. But even if you do, accept me as a fool, so that I too may boast a little. What I am saying with this boastful confidence, I say not with the Lord's authority, but as a fool. Since many boast according to the flesh, I too will boast. For you gladly bear with fools, being wise yourselves. For you bear it if someone makes slaves of you, or devours you, or takes advantage of you, or puts on airs, or strikes you in the face. To my shame, I must say, we were too weak for that. But whatever anyone else dares to boast of, I am speaking as a fool, I also dare to boast of that. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they offspring of Abraham? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I am a better one. I am talking like a madman, with far greater labors, far more imprisonments, with countless beatings and often near death. Five times I received at the hands of the Jews the forty lashes less one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea. On frequent journeys in danger from rivers, danger from robbers, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers. In toil and hardship through many a sleepless night, in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure. And apart from other things, there is the daily pressure on me of my anxiety for all the churches. Who is weak, and I am not weak? Who is made to fall, and I am not indignant? If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. The God and Father of the Lord Jesus, He who is blessed forever, knows that I am not lying. At Damascus, the governor under King Aretas was guarding the city of Damascus in order to seize me, but I was let down in a basket through a window in the wall and escaped his hands. The Proclamation of Independence for the State of Israel. This was read by David Ben-Gurion on May 14th. 1948. The land of Israel was the birthplace of the Jewish people. Here their spiritual, religious, and national identity was formed. Here they achieved independence and created a culture of national and universal significance. Here they wrote and gave the Bible to the world. Exiled from the land of Israel, the Jewish people remained faithful to it in all the countries of their dispersion never ceasing to pray and hope for their return and the restoration of their national freedom. Impelled by this historic association, Jews strove throughout the centuries to go back to the land of their fathers and regain their statehood. In recent decades, they returned in their masses. They reclaimed the wilderness, revived their language, built cities, and villages, and established a vigorous and ever-growing community with its own economic and cultural life. They sought peace, yet were prepared to defend themselves. They brought the blessings of progress to all inhabitants of the country and looked forward to sovereign independence. In the year 1897, 
the first Zionist Congress, inspired by Theodore Herzl's vision of the Jewish state, proclaimed the right of the Jewish people to national revival in their own country. This right was acknowledged by the Balfour Declaration of November 2, 1917, and reaffirmed by the mandate of the League of Nations, which gave explicit international recognition to the historic connection of the Jewish people with Palestine and their right to reconstitute their national home. The recent Holocaust, which engulfed millions of Jews in Europe, proved anew the need to solve the problem of the homelessness and lack of independence of the Jewish people by means of the reestablishment of the Jewish state, which would open the gates to all Jews and endow the Jewish people with equality of status among the family of nations. The survivors of the disastrous slaughter in Europe and also Jews from other lands have not desisted from their efforts to reach Eretz Yisrael in face of difficulties, obstacles, and perils, and have not ceased to urge their right to a life of dignity, freedom, and honest toil in their ancestral land. In the Second World War, the Jewish people in Palestine made their full contribution to the struggle of the freedom-loving nations against the Nazi evil. The sacrifices of their soldiers and their war effort gained them the right to rank with the nations which founded the United Nations. On November 29, 1947, the General Assembly of the United States of the United Nations adopted a resolution requiring the establishment of a Jewish state in Palestine. The General Assembly called upon the inhabitants of the country to take all the necessary steps on their part to put the plan into effect. This recognition by the United Nations of the right of the Jewish people to establish their independent state is unassailable. It is the natural right of the Jewish people to lead, as do all other nations, an independent existence in its sovereign state. Accordingly, we, the members of the National Council, representing the Jewish people in Palestine and the World Zionist Movement, are met together in solemn assembly today, the day of termination of the British mandate for Palestine. And by virtue of the natural and historic right of the Jewish people and of the resolution of the General Assembly of the United Nations, we hereby proclaim the establishment of the Jewish state in Palestine to be called Midinat Yisrael, the State of Israel. We hereby declare that, as from the termination of the mandate at midnight, the 14th to 15th, May 1948, and pending the setting up of the duly elected bodies of the state in accordance with the Constitution to be drawn up by the cons Constituent Assembly, not later than the 1st of October 1948, the National Council shall act as the Provisional State Council and that the national administrations will constitute the provisional government of the Jewish state, which shall be known as Yisrael, Israel. The state of Israel will be open to the immigration of Jews from all countries of their dispersion, will promote the development of the country for the benefit of all its inhabitants, will be based on the principles of liberty, justice, and peace as conceived by the prophets of Israel, Yisrael, will uphold the full social and political equality of all its citizens without distinction, without distinction of religion, race, or sex, will guarantee freedom of religion, conscience, education, and culture, will safeguard the holy places of all religions, and will loyally uphold the principles of the United Nations Charter State of Israel will be ready to cooperate with the organs and representatives of the United Nations in the implementation of the resolution of the Assembly of November 29, 1947, and will take steps to bring about the economic union over the whole of Palestine. We appeal to the United Nations to assist the Jewish people 
in the building of its state and to admit Israel into the family of nations. In the midst of wanton aggression, we yet call upon the Arab inhabitants of the state of Israel to preserve the ways of peace and play their part in the development of the state on the basis of full and equal citizenship and due representation in all its bodies and institutions, provisional and permanent. We extend our hand in peace and neighborliness to all the neighboring states and their peoples and invite them to cooperate with the independent Jewish nation for the common good of all. The State of Israel is prepared to make its contribution to the progress of the Middle East as a whole. Our call goes out to the Jewish people all over the world to rally to our side in the task of immigration and development and to stand by us in the great struggle of the fulfillment of the dream, generation for the redemption of Israel. We trust in God Almighty. We set our hand to this declaration at this session of the Provisional State Council on the soil of the homeland in the city of Tel Aviv on this Shabbat Sabbath Eve, the 5th of Iyar, 5708, the 14th day of May, 1948. 2 Corinthians 12 I must go on boasting. Though there is nothing to be gained by it, I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who, fourteen years ago, was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man was caught up into paradise. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And he heard things that cannot be told, which man may not utter. On behalf of this man, I will boast. But on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. Though if I should wish to boast, I would not be a fool, for I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think more of me than he sees in me or hears from me. So to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I have been a fool. You forced me to it, for I ought to have been commended by you. For I was not at all inferior to these super-apostles, even though I am nothing. The signs of a true apostle were performed among you with utmost patience, with signs and wonders and mighty works. For in what were you less favored than the rest of the churches, except that I myself did not burden you? Forgive me this wrong. Here for the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be a burden, for I seek not what is yours, but you. For children are not obligated to save up for their parents, but parents for their children. I will most gladly spend and be spent for your souls. If I love you more, am I to be loved less? But granting that I myself did not burden you, I was crafty, you say, and got the better of you by deceit. Did I take advantage of you through any of those whom I sent to you? I urged Titus to go and sent the brother with him. Did Titus take advantage of you? Did we not act in the same spirit? Did we not take the same steps? Have you been thinking all along that we have been defending ourselves to you? It is in the sight of God that we have been speaking in Christ, and all for your upbuilding, beloved. For I fear that Perhaps when I come I may find you not as I wish, and that you may find me not as you wish, that perhaps there may be quarreling, jealousy, anger, hostility, slander, gossip, conceit, and disorder. 
I fear that when I come again, my God may humble me before you, and I may have to mourn over many of those who sinned earlier and have not repented of the impurity, sexual immorality, and sensuality that they have practiced. Get your motor running Preach it on the highways A spiritual adventure When Mashiach likes to wave Get a Bible, read and see it happen Love not this world, enter in His grace Get fired up in the sun of righteousness With healing wings into space Like the true, now supernatural child Never again to be wild We will fly so high To that golden city in the sky Born again to be wise Seek him Born again to be wise Trust him Know him Second Corinthians 13 This is the third time I am coming to you. Every charge must be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. I warned those who sinned before and all the others, and I warned them now while absent, as I did when present on my second visit, that if I come again I will not spare them, since you seek proof that Christ is speaking in me. He is not weak in dealing with you, but is powerful among you. For he was crucified in weakness, but lives by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but in dealing with you, we will live with him by the power of God. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Or do you not realize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you fail to meet the test? I hope you will find out that we have not failed the test, but we pray to God that you may not do wrong, not that we may appear to have met the test, but that you may do what is right, though we may seem to have failed. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak and you are strong. Your restoration is what we pray for. For this reason I write these things while I am away from you, that when I come, I may not have to be severe in my use of the authority that the Lord has given me for building up and not for tearing down. Finally, brothers, rejoice. Aim for restoration. Comfort one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It was in another lifetime, one of toil and blood, when Caesar was the emperor. Faith watered down to mud. Yochanan crying in the wilderness, preparing what was formed. Come in, Shiach gives you shelter from the storm. The prophets warn us all again so we can rest assured. He gave his life for all his friends so we could share his word. Proven none are innocent. Till we've been reborn Come in Mashiach Gives us shelter from the storm Not a word was spoken Without the truth There was little risk involved Everything that has been done It's finished, it's resolved Try imagining a place Where it's always safe and warm Come in Mashiach Gives you shelter from the storm. For those burned out from exhaustion, stressed out in travails, poisoned by the pagan lies, blindly on the trails, 
hunted by vile, wicked smiles of prostitutes and porn. Come in, Messiah gives ya shelter from the Sin and cares, remembering people, places, and things, and a testimony bared. We'll walk in faith so gracefully to respect his crown of thorns. Come in, he said, I'll give you shelter from the storm. He'll put up walls protecting you to seek and save what's lost. His will is pure to grant your life when you had your signals crossed. Just to think that it all began on a, like a young lamb in the morn. Come in, the shepherd gives you shelter from the storm. Well, you that are heavy laden, he preached it from the mount. His yoke is easy and his burden's light. It's peace alone that counts. And the one that takes away your worries will blow that judgment horn. Come in, the shepherd gives you shelter from the storm. Sit sick souls are wailing, caught in their selfish lives. Old men with religious thoughts, the confused, deceived, and all strifes. Do you understand the question, man? They're not hopeless and forlorn. Come in, I say, he gives them shelter from the storm. Oh, there's a storm coming. In the ancient land called Israel, the Romans gambled for his clothes. We rejected his salvation. Yes, the Bible tells me so. He offers us innocence. The foolish still have scorn. Come in, I say, he gives us shelter from the storm. Now we're scattered in foreign countries, and we're coming home in time. The reality of the scripture's truth Just seek and you will find We cannot turn back the clock But blessed are those who mourn Come in, the king will give you Mercy from the storm